Okay, let's just get an overview of what happened in chapter one. In chapter one, we started looking at the most basic idea in geometry, and that is a point. So we had a point. It has no dimensions to it. It's more of an idea, a location. And we learn to name points. Usually we use an uppercase letter, A, B, C, something like that. Then we said this. Uh, we said, well, what if you have two points, A and B, and you connect those two points this way? We said, okay, that, we're going to call that a line segment, okay? A line segment, and we will name that AB with a little line over it, okay? So that's AB. And if we're talking about how long the line segment is, then we're going to just denote that as AB. In other words, the length of it. Next, we said, well, what happens if you have a, a full line? So it passes through AB, but it goes on forever in both directions. Well, we call that a line, and we denote it this way, a little AB with an arrow above, uh, a two-way arrow, okay? Now, we could, we could go further and we could say, well, let's look at this thing. Let's suppose it, uh, we have this thing that starts at A and goes to the right, passing through B, but there's nothing to the left of A. Well, we call that a ray. We write it that way. So we have the initial point and the terminal point. Now, we could also do a ray starting at B And going through A, here's A, and here's, here's B, and we could call that ray BA. Okay? So we've got these things. So, so we start off with the most basic, a point, uh, a line segment, a line, uh, a ray. Now, we can also, we have different types of rays. For example, let's suppose we've got a C here, and let's suppose it goes through B over here. So we've got C and B, and then we've got it going this way. <laughs> it's got a crooked. Here's A. We could talk about the ray CB, and we could talk about the ray CA. Now, these two rays, because they have the same initial point and they're going in opposite direction, we call these opposite rays. Okay, opposite rays. Okay, so, just some, so we just have some terminology. Now, the next thing we looked at was a plane. You know, and a lot of times we'll denote it this way. You know, something like this. And we talk about a plane, something out here in space. Uh, okay, now, so, so let's suppose we have A, B, and C. Okay? Okay, so this is something we noticed also, plane. So, so here's the thing. Now, these are the three shapes that we, are the three things that we started looking at. And we said some things that we need to note here. One, these opposite rays. When we talk about opposite rays, what are we talking about? Well, this, this type of situation. Now, some things we want to note. Two points determine a line. A line, okay? So, uh, 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 one, only one line, yeah. Determine a line, okay? Two points determine a line. Three non-collinear points determine exactly one plane.
exactly one plane. Yeah. Just like two points determine exactly one line. I left that out. Okay, so so these are these are some things that that we we looked at. Now, if we have let's suppose we have two line segments, and let's suppose that we measure them and they are the same length. So we have this line segment AB, and we have a line segment over here, CD. Okay, so here we have AB, and here we have CD. If the measure, we could talk about the measure of AB, and I believe what we did when we talked about that, we just said AB. Let's suppose that AB is equal to CD. It means they have the same length. Or we could say that AB is congruent to CD. See? Notice the different notation. Okay. So if this if this length here is two and this length is two, we we talk about the length. The length of AB is equal to the length of C D. Well, if that's true, they're congruent. Okay. So we looked at that. Then we talked about the distance formula. So we, we had the distance formula. The distance formula. Where we, if, he, if we have two points, x1, x2, and, or x1, y1, I should say, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the distance formula the distance between those two points is just going to be the difference of the x's plus the difference of the y's squared, of course. The square root of all that. Okay? And then we had the midpoint formula. Which is a point where we average the x's. And we average the y's. And that will give you the midpoint. So there we we're able to find distances. Now, if you just have one dimensional thing, like the distance between two numbers, like for example, if you have this situation, let's just look at a number line here. Let's suppose you have 0, 1, 2, 3. And here you have negative 1, negative 2. And we want the distance between negative 2 and 3. Well, you do the absolute value of 3 minus a negative 2. That's the absolute value of 5, which is 5. Okay? So, you know, it's still the distance formulas, but it's one dimension. Okay. Then we talked about angles. Okay? I think that was the next thing we used, uh, angles. Or the next thing we looked at, angles. So we looked at, and, and we note, first of all, when we talk about angles, we're talking about two rays that share an initial point. So we have A, B, and we have A, C over here, okay? So we have A, B, which is a ray, and we have A, C, which is a ray. Those two come together to form this angle. These AB and AC are the sides of the angle. Now, if, so, so we classify the angle. So if we have an angle that's less than 90 degrees, we call that acute. If we have an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, we call that obtuse. Now, if two angles add up to 90 degrees, we call those complementary. Okay, so here's angle 1 and here's angle 2. And let's suppose this is 90 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 90 degrees. Then we talk about this being complementary. Angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if, if 
if angle three plus angle four equals 108, well, the measure. Let me do the measure. Okay. If we have the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four equals 180 degrees, then we say angle three and angle four are, are supplementary. Okay, now there's, there's another couple of uh, terms that we need to think about. We can talk about adjacent angles. So, so let's suppose that we've got this type situation where we've got angle one and angle two. Okay, notice they're right next to each other. They share one of these common sides here and they share a vertex. Okay, if we have this, we talk about angle one is adjacent. Adjacent um, to angle two. Yeah, we're talking about it being a, a adjacent. Now, we can also talk about angles being linear pairs. So, so think about this. Let's suppose that we have this situation. Let's suppose we have a vertical angle here, and we have angle 1 and angle 2 over here. Then angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pairs. They're a linear pair, okay? Angle one and angle two are linear pair, or are, are a linear pair. Okay, now we also have vertical angles. So, so dig this. Let's suppose we've got this situation. We've got angle one and two. In this case, angle one and angle two are vertical angles. There we go. Okay, next let's go down to uh, talk about the polygons. We talked about polygons. And I'm just hitting the high points here. Polygons, <laughs> misspelled polygains, polygons. Okay, so, so polygons, we classify them according to sides. We've got triangles, we've got quadrilaterals. Those are four-sided polygons. We've got uh, pentagons, five-sided polygons. Now, here's the thing. We have, uh, we have these. L let's just look at two different polygons here. Okay, here's a polygon, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides. So this is an octagon. <laughs> and I didn't, these don't really look like straight lines here, but... It's an octagon, and we say this polygon is convex because if you go to any one of the lines, the sides on here, any one of the sides, and just extend it out, it does not pass through any part of the interior of the polygon. So when that happens, we say our polygon is convex. Now we can contrast that with a polygon that looks a little bit different. Oh, look at this polygon. It looks different. It's still a polygon. Okay, still a polygon. But notice that when, when we extend one of these sides, We do have a situation where the extended line here does pass through the interior of the polygon. See, it happens there, and it happens there. Ah, when that happens, we say that these, this polygon is concave. So that polygon there, it's concave. Now, when a polygon, if, if all the angles of a polygon
are of equal measure. The polygon is equal angular. Okay, if all the sides are of equal measure, then we say that the polygon is equilateral. Let me see. Is equilateral. Now, those are two cl classifications. Now, here's the thing. If a convex polygon is both of these, then it is regular. Yeah, if it's both of those, we say it's regular. Okay, now, uh, we also talked about uh, perimeter, perimeter, and circumference, circumference and area. Now, we looked at, well, we looked at quadrilaterals. So, so if we have squares or rectangles, it's going to be area equals length times width. The parameter uh, the perimeter <laughs> is going to equal 2L plus 2W. Yeah, that's for uh, quad, quadrilateral. Now, if we have a circle, we have the area is equal to pi R squared, and the circumference is equal to 2 pi R. So that's if you have a circle. And I think I think those are the those are the main things that we looked at. Uh, we didn't look at circular sectors or anything like that. I don't think. Let me let me think about this a minute. No, I think that's all we did with with those. But look, this is just kind of an overview of the material and the terms that you need to be familiar with uh, from this first chapter. And you can go back and look at the assignments to see what kind of questions you might need to be able to answer.